Welcome, welcome to uh, the latest episode of my Bloodborne playthrough. Yes, I tried. If it looks different, it's because I put this at one and a half speed. Because we've been to the hub a few times now, so it's not that interesting what I get up to here. Um, right now, I'm running through um, dropping items inside my box. So this can clean up your inventory, uh, make it faster for you. For example, look, two hunter's gloves, let's get rid of one of them, same with the trousers. Uh, starting gear, well, it's really low armor, so you're not gonna need it. So get rid of it, it's out of your inventory. You can sell them at the store for almost no money, but, you know, you may as well just dump them in the box. <laughs> ah, look at that horrible sort of um, chipmunk voice. Farewell, good hunter. Okay, enough of that silliness. Yes, I'm in this episode. I'm going to speed up the um, hunter's dream, but the rest of it back to normal speed. Here's that old lady that we rescued from the previous episode. Well, that's a fine lark, guys. This old mess that Yarnum's in is all your fault. That's great. Don't you come near me. Very charming lady. So, yes. Don't worry, she is worth rescuing because she gives you light items later on. So, another path from um, Warden Chapel. In this one, there's a few blood shards, which are great for upgrading your weapon. There, three more here. Yep, that item over there, that's more blood shards. And if you look in the distance as I turn the corner, there's a wandering man. I'd see, yep, that little black area, it just disappeared on me. Wandering madness, we usually have uh, blood shards, 9 out of 10 times on them. Sometimes they have, um, stone ones. They need the well for this, I just in my old uh, Zelda days. Constantly breaking pots. So they also, um, those wandering mammoths, sometimes have these gemstones for weapons, but most of the time they have bloodstones. So that one, it disappeared. So we can make a respawn by coming back into the area or by exiting and coming straight back into the game, like this. So we're going to walk slowly up the staircase to see if we can uh, see it. Now there's no good way to get this wandering madness. You can come out from one side or the other, but that big guy is going to attack you every single time, no matter what. If you have high strength, you just kill it and hit the item and run. Or you can suck like me and die, but I've only got 86 blood echoes in the top right that I'm going to drop on my body, so that's not much. And uh, I got the shot, so it doesn't matter, so I can upgrade my weapon. So I'm going to skip that section, that end piece at least. Now there was one other item that I wanted to get. I wanted to get the monocular. It is an item that is pretty pointless, but it helps you zoom in if you wanted to see a distant item, a distant area. So it's just a little zoom function. over content the end running through stuff. But what have I got to risk at the moment? Nothing. Because I only have 86 blood echoes on the side or zero. So why not? So still outside Auden Chapel, uh, there's another section around here and this also leads on with the game down this path. Because uh, this path eventually leads into Old Yarnum. Very lucky like that, the dog uh, walks into the fire and kills us. So one less into battle. I do love the ragdoll physics in this. There's just something fun about kicking a body and putting it all over the place. A couple items. Now there's one other person. If you were to run close to the fire in the, in this room, uh, all the guys would aggro because they'd see you. So it's best to stay out of the, the area of the fire 
and uh, pick them off one at a time. You could always use pebbles or those throwing knives if you wanted to try and grab one at a time. This is a great choke. So you've got a guy at the top of the staircase firing the gun, and you've got two guys coming down to stun you so that you can see that. A great trap for new players. So I like to back away, that's my way of doing it. Other people would run straight through. So we're going to meet another NPC now. His name is Alfred and he's one of the Executioners. So they are a band of uh, people who want to hunt down vile bloods, which is another covenant. This is Alfred's hiding place. You're a beast hunter, aren't you? I knew it. That's precisely how I started out. Oh, beg pardon. You may call me... Alfred, protege of Master Ligarius, hunter of vile bloods. So, what say you? Our prey might differ, but we are hunters, the both of us. Why not cooperate and discuss the things we've learned? Oh, very good. Very good indeed. Take this to celebrate our acquaintance. Beast hunting is a sacred practice. May the good blood guide your way. So as Alfred said, he is hunting vile bloods. So he's in the covenant of the executioners, and he hunts anyone that's in the covenant of the vile bloods. So they're a late game covenant, both of them. But the item he's given us is fire paper which is a fire buff that hangs around on our weapon for about 60 seconds. Very, very handy against beasts, especially early game. So we're going to make sure we keep them and use them on the next boss, which is the Blood Starved Beast. Of course, the word beast in it. Use serrated weapon like we have now and use fire paper to extra damage. So you can read um, what the enemy is Weak to, just in the name, most of the time. Cleric Beast, use fire. Bloodstar Beast, use, use fire to use serrated weapons. This is one of those dark rooms again, so I pulled out a torch. See, pretty dark, and much easier to see in the, with a torch. Now, we picked up uh, Gascoin's armor because it's got great poison resistance because the next section we're going to be uh, hit by poison attacks. Antidote that I just picked up there, that will uh, cure your poison. It cures the poison buildup and uh, you, or you can use it to stop being poisoned. Now the level design here is really fantastic because as you went down that path you went straight to the lamp but because it, the level design is so great here, there's actually an item hidden on the side. Just little rooms like that, and the next area, they've both got just great level design. Areas that just come back on each other and link up. It's really good, you know. You've only got one fire, one bonfire, one lamp, <laughs> same thing. One checkpoint, but then you got these little shortcuts that make a large area a lot smaller for when you die at the boss. So uh, I had a plus two weapon earlier so now I'm going to fortify it and make it plus three. You can also use your blood gems. Uh, what I do? I repaired. So didn't need to pop that one but you've always got to dump off your uh, blood echoes because you're only going to lose them. And I'm overconfident again. You're running in. I am such a silly person sometimes. Uh, but I don't have enough for a level, so I'm just going to do a little short section. Now, we've got a warning on the door saying hunters go away. There's an NPC in this area as well. Now 
Now I've got my torch out. The torch is a kind of interesting item in this area because these guys here, they're afraid of fire. So you see them cower and they give them chances to get an extra attack. Most of them will be uh, momentarily stunned and they'll back away for away from the fire. Okay, here. He will poison you with attacks, so always good to have Gascoigne's armor at this point. So Old Yarnum, uh, this is a, a town that's been long abandoned because as you can see all the beasts around. It's come to the beastly scourge. So the hunters were sent in, they would have been the black church hunters, to um, wipe out all the beasts. Over here got more bloodstone shards and the wandering madness has got some more bloodstone shards. So the hunter up above, he will um, shoot you if you get too close to him. Because he says um, in his introduction, these beasts need, need, uh, need no armor. To and um, what you don't realize in the game early on is that these aren't just beasts, these were previously humans that have been infected with bad blood and then they've turned into beasts. But then again, it could have been the good blood and a bit of time and you turn into a beast. So it's a healing church. Everyone wanted to go to the healing church and get blood transfusions. But this is what came of it. Now up this ladder, you can actually climb it fast or slow. That's fast and that's normal pace by holding down the run key, which would be the circle on the control. There's a little note I wanted to throw in there. So we finally have uh, 3,600 blood echoes, so I have enough to level. So I'm going to head back and end this section, and then on the next section we'll explore the majority of Old Yarnum, which uh, is just really great level design because it's got so many tunnels, and intricate pathways, and lots of loot everywhere. So I finally decided with this character which way I want to build it. I'm going to do a skill build. So I'm going to have faster weapons that don't do that much damage, but the faster attack will let me get in more attacks. So it's the end of the section, so please leave comments, subscribe and like, because it's not going to get any better unless you make it better, so thank you. Welcome for the city.